डॉक्टर्स एसोसिएशन फॉर रिलीफ एंड एजुकेशन डेयर टॉक्स ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग आइडियाज इन टू रियालिटी dignitaries uh, my name is uh, dr humaira fatima and i am a general surgery resident and actually the today's topic we were supposed to discuss uh, technological advancements and how to uh, you know the various aspects of technology in healthcare how it's impacting us and it was supposed to be a very uh, detailed discussion as such but uh, it, it is very difficult and impossible to discuss it without images and uh projecting the videos and what uh, how it works so uh i would encourage to you to ask any questions uh, if you have and uh, let this be uh, you know didactic talk a two way discussion okay so i would like to discuss the advancements in surgical approaches we have been uh, seeing these days to begin with the least access surgeries Uh, which is also known as the minimally access surgeries or minimally invasive surgeries or in layman language it is also known as the keyhole surgeries which the patients these days prefer it's broadly uh, classified into a lot of uh, scopes like depending on the specialty your end so the main motto of minimally invasive surgery is to give the least incision the size of the incision and the number of the incisions should be least and the damage and the trauma to the patient psychological damage the mental impact of the recovery it that should be very least and the equipments used are very sophisticated here and these are very advanced and uh, quite expensive not to forget so the type of minimally invasive surgeries are the traditional laparoscopy starting from that to thoracoscopy and arthroscopies which is which are used in or, uh, orthopedics angioplasties and uh, interventional radiology procedures which sir has just discussed and the endoscopic procedures sir might be knowing them all and the last the latest is the robotic surgery so minimally invasive surgery in general surgery or the gastro surgeries are broadly uh, these days they are uh, moving towards a single incision laparoscopic surgery which is the least invasive going through a single port and also the natural orifice transluminal endoscopy which is also known as the nodes using the natural orifices completely eliminating the need for a scar or an incision on the patient so to begin with the laparoscopy we all know it is a traditional laparoscopy i would not like to spend much of my time explaining that since we all are aware of how laparoscopy works we uh, access the patient's abdomen through two or three small holes and usually it's through the umbilicus and two or three holes so in in a triangular fashion where the surgeon and the assistant they both uh, work along with the console and uh, with the insufflators and the equipment lcd screens so this is how uh, the setup looks like and these are quite a few procedures almost all the procedures these days are accessible through laparoscopy so we don't have to like uh, uh, open up the patient's abdomen completely for any single procedure so this is how the theater setup and tools looks like for most of the procedures not only laparoscopy this is the basic equipment required for all the uh, further procedures which i'm about to discuss so we have the laparoscopic kit with the insufflators and the sophisticated equipments and the most important part is the video system these are the uh, instruments the laparoscopes and the trocars and the insufflators these are the basic instruments so coming towards thoracoscopy uh, in india thoracoscopy is not very rampant or not widely applied because maybe there is lack of the surgeons or the trainees and also patients uh, not being aware of it also and there are not many centers uh, i feel uh, which provide vats thoracoscopy maybe a few in uh, north and a few in our uh, you know uh, hospitals like uh, aig or reshoda sikandarabad they might have it 
So this is how the, the approach is uh, through the, uh, you don't have to uh, take out any of the ribs through fourth and the seventh uh, intercostal spaces. We reach into the thoracic cavity and that is how many of the procedures, uh, you know, pertaining to the pleura, the lungs, and uh, even the pericardium are uh, performed, including lobectomies and lung cancer, uh, you know, for the lung cancer patients, and uh, pleurodesis and uh, pericardiosynthesis. This is the difference between an open thoracotomy. You will see the incision size of the incision and how we need to access uh, the thorax by removing the particular ribs, two or three ribs in there. And then uh, compared to wax, it's such a keyhole surgery and small uh, incision. And uh, we get to do the same procedure with better outcomes. So that has been uh, possible, uh, made possible due to uh, the equipments which are sophisticated and uh, customized for uh, the thorax and also single anesthesia which uh, allows us to operate on one lung while the patient is still breathing with the other. So these are quite a few indications, not all, but a few indications very important and the most common ones uh, which uh, we use VATS for and the conditions of the pleura, it's not only limited to the lungs and heart, it is also limited to the spine, where uh, there is, if there is a case of spinal abscess for, uh, you know, in case of a pot spine, or also for a thoracic uh, sympathectomy, for hyperhidrosis of the upper limbs, and the bronchopleural fistulae, and also the uh, thyroidectomies, thyroidectomy or parathyroidectomy through the VATS procedure. This is very, less invasive procedure. Coming towards arthroscopy, we all have an idea how rampantly it is used in uh, orthopedics these days. This is also perivisceral endoscopy. This is uh, not quite uh, common, but it is also done in a few centers in Hyderabad and Bangalore and the north. So angioplasty, we are all aware that is one of the least invasive procedures which sir has already covered. So coming towards the latest development in laparoscopy, there is a single incision laparoscopic surgery, it's called SILS. The entire procedure is done only through a single incision. That is usually the umbilicus where all the ports are inserted through one incision itself. This is the latest technology. And uh, here also the instruments almost are the same which are used in laparoscopy, but then they have a a uh, degree of angulation towards the distal end so that inside the abdomen they can be maneuvered properly. This is how it looks like inside a single incision laparoscopic surgery. So these are the different types of uh, scopes that have evolved. So this is one of the uh, single incision laparoscope known as the Cobra Triangulating Scope which has uh, you know different uh, instruments at the end of it for degrees of freedom, many degrees of freedom. Coming towards nodes, nodes is the latest one these days. It is the natural orifice transluminal endoscopic surgery, which means we use the natural orifices without creating a new incision. That is also known as a scarless surgery. These are surgeons without a scalpel. We use the natural orifices to gain access to the abdominal or the internal organs. So the access sites which we use usually are the transoral, means transgastric, and up until now we have performed transoral thyroidectomies, transgastric uh, cholecystectomies as well, and transgastric gastrojejunostomies or enterostomies as also. The transvesical procedure, as we all know, the TURP which we uh, do is also one of the transvesical procedures, but there are there is more to it. We can also access the abdomen through the bladder. So transvaginal, this is the most uh, widely used, but it is only limited for females. And uh, transvaginal can be, uh, we can gain access to the abdomen as well as to the liver and also to the stomach. Transrectal is the same, but it has a high risk of uh, infections due to the, uh, you know, unprepared bowel flora and everything. So this is a brief history of notes and how it started. So it, the idea was proposed uh, right in the early 1980s to, uh, you know, to gain access via the natural orifices.
and in India, the first, uh, not even in India, in the world, the first transgastric appendectomy was conducted by, uh, was performed by Dr. G. V. Rao and Narayan Reddy sir of the AIG hospitals. And uh, the transgastric nodes cholecystectomy was done by in 2007. The transvaginal appendectomy was done in 2007 also. So there have been a lot of other procedures, the latest being the uh, donor nephrectomy. Even a donor nephrectomy was performed transvaginally in 2008. So you can imagine the impact of, you know, uh, not undergoing, uh, not undergoing through uh, such a big loin incision, which we require to access the kidney. So these are the uh, routes through which we can perform nodes. First is the transgastric one. Second is the transrectal. Sorry, here the second is the transvesicle. Third is the transrectal and then the transvaginal we can uh, that, that is the that is the scope reaching up to the kidney so these are the approaches to the gallbladder also how a cholecystectomy can be performed uh, transvaginally and transrectally also transgastric there will be an internal incision not to forget though so when we are entering the lumen, the human body, we are gaining access to uh, the human body without any incision. We have to reach another organ. So we need to make an incision internally somewhere. So when you go through the vagina, it is the posterior vaginal fornix. When you go to the uh, stomach, it has to be an in, uh, incision inside the stomach and also on the colon, posterior side of the colon, transverse colon. And that is why there could be a chance of leak when that side, port side, is not closed properly. And that can lead to peritonitis. That is, uh, I guess, the most, uh, uh, you know, dreaded complication. But uh, that has to be managed with a very tight, or not a very tight, but a very secure uh, incision, sorry, uh, suture. So that is the setup, how it is done. It is almost the same like a laparoscopy thing, but uh, only the access side is different. So this is the instrument, these are the instruments. This is the endoscope, scope which we use for the uh, liver and hepatobiliary procedures, commonly used one. This is the latest one, uh, it's called Anubis. And these are the uh, instruments, the, the equipments which have evolved over a period of time and with their different names, the latest being the endoluminal robotic platform. There are a lot of advantages of nodes, as you can see, the ease of access, it is natural and uh, least invasive, there is no scar at all. It is safe and it is feasible, it is, uh, there is faster recovery, there is less trauma to the patient and there are less, inc uh, you know, decreased incidences of wound infections and no incidences of hernias as such, incisional hernias because we are not giving any incision as such and post-op analgesia and post-op pain is minimal. So only limitation as I had already discussed was the peritonitis if in case there is a leak or any surgical site infection that is it and that is why we need to secure, we need to have a very secure internal incision. So there could be um, you know complications sometimes which is quite normal and almost the same incidence rates as there is in the laparoscopic procedures or any other procedures of uh, vascular or any visceral injury and then it might be needed to convert it to open. So the last one, robotic surgery, it encompasses all of these. When all of these procedures, they can be done either personally or via a robot, which the robot can be either uh, placed within the uh, hospital or within the city or anywhere in the world and the uh, doctor surgeon can perform the surgery. But we only need to have a secure internet connection for that without much, much delay. Because uh, if there is any latent delay of even more than 250 milliseconds, the, you know, there will be a delay in the application of the instruction and order. And it might cause uh, any damage. So 
the latest is the robotic surgery. It allows the surgeon to have seven degrees of wrist movement and freedoms. And it is just like a joystick, you know, playing on a video game. You sit on a console, the patient, uh, the surgeon sits on a console and he plays like a video game and he just sees in his, uh, you know, VR glasses. And then the robot takes in the information and the, the robot performs the surgery. That is very uh, latest and it is already being performed in Hyderabad at many centers and uh, elsewhere in India as well. It is also uh, useful in hostile environments where the surgeons cannot themselves go, like in battlefields where the soldiers might need you know, emergency surgeries and also deep sea divers or the outer space where astronauts, if in case they have any problem, the surgeon can operate while he's on the earth. Isn't that good? That great? So this is how it looks like. This is the console where the surgeon sits and this are the joystick. It's like he plays with it. It's just like a video game. And uh, that is the robot. Somebody has to be there to dock in the arms inside the patient and place the ports. That is the video tower and the insufflator. And in reality, it looks like this. Da Vinci is 11 is the latest generation that's in use at most of our centers. And there is also a single port robot that is the latest development again. So a robot with a single port just like the single port we had in laparoscopy. So this is a robot with only one arm. It has all the instruments docked inside of it which open in only inside the abdomen. You can see how the arms are. They curve at the distal end. They are movable. They are you know maneuverable at the distal end so that they open only in the inside the abdomen. So this single port robotic surgery was approved for cholecystectomies in 2011 and also for hysterectomies in 2013. So these are all the instruments inside a single port. So as I have discussed, there are many advantages of these minimally invasive surgeries and the patient would definitely prefer. Only thing uh, I guess is limiting cost. It is highly expensive and it is a heavy equipment. It cannot be moved around. At, uh, that is why it is uh, not portable. And also the training curve is not quite big, I would say. There are many takers for it and there are many teachers also. We just need to uh, make it a norm by opting for it. The surgeons who are very well versed with laparoscopy, I think they would not have any issue learning with robotics and uh, other single port uh, procedures. But that is also like there is no uh, you know tactile uh, sensation. So we have to manage with it and there should be excellent hand-eye coordination for it. So those are just the limitations. So it is uh, better for the surgeon like uh, Hand-eye precision, uh, it's very good with the robots and it enhances the skills of a surgeon because the minimally invasive surgeon you are, it's better for the patient as well. And uh, it shortens the surgical time and better improvement, shorter hospital stay, uh, faster recovery. So complications are almost the same or lesser if not equal than laparoscopic and open procedures as well. So the only thing is if there is a heavy vasculature bleed or leak out which cannot be controlled then we'll have to convert it to open procedures. So we need to keep adapting to change. It is not easy but we still have to keep adapting to the latest technologies otherwise we will collect dust. Thank you. Thank you.